don't judge a book by its cover because you never know what might be hidden inside. Unfortunately, Javante Davis's dim-witted opponents find it hard to understand this elementary rule. So Tank has to explain everything to them in the most accessible language, the language of pain. Sorry for the US being assigned uh, to me with a promotion because on January 14th, when he takes away his undefeated record, it's going to feel like he beat Mayweather. Out of my 39 wins, I have 33 of them by knockout, so I can say that by co with confidence that I'm, I can see a knockout for Javante Davis. No fighter is invincible, and I really think that that's a really possible outcome on Saturday. We have a great, great power in the hand, so that fight will be finished for KO. Friends, in today's video, you will learn about the fights in which Javante ripped out the long tongues of trash talkers. Let's get started. Liam Walsh. These days, anyone even remotely familiar with boxing knows who Javante Davis is and why it's dangerous to joke about him. But recognition did not come to the champion from the very start. At the dawn of his career, most fans saw Tank as just another promising kid with completely unclear potential. Yes, he scored cool knockouts in the first minutes, but he did it against guys no one knew about. The only thing that distinguished Javante from the ruck at that time was his promoter, Floyd Mayweather. Thanks to the king of boxing, the talented young man did not get lost in the prelims and gradually became more and more popular and in 2017, he got his first title fight. At that time, Davis competed in the super featherweight division and he got the status of contender for the IBF championship. As for the opponent, it happened to be the undefeated Puerto Rican Jose Pedraza. Jose made the young prospect put in a lot of work, all while making Floyd wipe sweat from his forehead with a stack of bills, but ultimately could not handle Javante's wild power and was knocked out. The new division leader decided not to sit on the bench and soon had his first title defense against the British at his peak, Liam Walsh. Um, he's it's for me to exploit him, it's for me to take advantage of the times he does make mistakes and and I know when I was 22 there's things I would have done and mistakes I would have made that I definitely would have made now so you know maybe, maybe this is the perfect time to fight him. The undefeated Walsh had never contended for a title of one of the main organizations and had hardly fought top opponents but still considered himself a boxing prodigy and planned to run over Tank due to experience. I predict I will win the fight. By, by what method? Um, I don't know. I, would, I wouldn't be shocked if I win by knockout. I wouldn't be shocked if I win by points. So, <laughs> no, no result will shock me. No result. I'm not going to be shocked. I'm not going to... You won't see me celebrating like a madman if I have to knock Tank out because I know I'm capable of it. So, But I haven't got an exact prediction. Liam was also not shy about teaching Javante life and giving him priceless advice. You know, this guy is just dancing to, dancing to his tune and he's pulling him along like a puppet. He's a beer old man, you know, he's 20 odd years old. I got, I got the man talk at about 15 when my dad sat me down and said, right, time to stand on your own two feet now, Liam. Go out, earn your own money. I was thinking, oh shit, what's going to happen here? Like, I thought it was the end of the world, but you got to stand up, be your own man, you know. It's, it's, it talks for him and everything. And, before the fight, Liam said a lot, but could he somehow back up his words? Um, I, I thought he was going to um, hold up a few rounds. I thought we were going to go the distance, so that's what I was prepared for. Surprisingly, the first round turned out to be almost contactless. The guys moved a lot, measured the distance and rarely attacked, and even those occasional bursts of combinations almost always ended with nothing, so the most effective punch turned out to be the jab. In the second round, the balance of power noticeably changed. Liam still threw single shots to the body and tried to find distance with the lead hand, and Javante started to have fun. The champion got used to the size and style of Walsh, so now he easily delivered heavy one-twos and also effectively cut the angles, avoiding counter-attacks. 
With each minute, Tank's left started landing better on the Briton's head and body, but he seemed unfazed with that and continued to work in his manner. From the third round, Davis switched to destruction mode. He completely stopped being afraid of the Briton's attacks and with each successful hit, he pressed harder. Diverse and ultra-fast attacks by Tank overloaded Liam's brain, so at some point he began to back up and Javante went after him. Catching up with his opponent near the ropes, Davis began blasting Walsh with his left like a hammer. After taking several monstrous hits, the contender got lost in space and literally slumped onto the canvas but decided to get back on his feet. At that very second, Tank rushed at him and fired from all guns. He's on on steady legs, he looks as though he's gone here Walsh. One more and it's all over, he stopped it. He's unleashed the power shot. Rolando Romero Monstrous knockouts in fights with top boxers combined with the PR machine of Floyd Mayweather instantly turned Javante into one of the most interesting prospects in boxing, but it wasn't without difficulties. Going out for the next defense, the Baltimore native failed to make weight, for which he was immediately stripped of the title. Disappointed by this circumstance, Davis turned the unfortunate contender into a sieve and after the victory, seriously thought about moving up to 135 pounds. Before leaving the super featherweight division for good, Javante had three more fights there, in each of which it was necessary to call a priest to read a prayer for Tank's opponent. In 2019, Davis finally debuted in a new weight class and immediately got a batch of the most experienced top-level boxers. Yoriokas Gamboa, Leo Santa Cruz, Mario Barrios, Isaac Cruz, all these guys took or will take belts from one of the main organizations and Santa Cruz even conquered four weight classes. Not without problems, but Davis managed to handle each of them and along the way took the WBA title in two divisions. By 2022, Tank had brought his record to 26 and 0 and could well have become one of the contenders for the status of the undisputed champion, but instead he ended up in a fight against Rolando Romero. See the seventh round knock this this dwarf the fuck out. That's how it is. You hear that? I'm gonna knock you the fuck out. While Javante has always been the one who talks a lot and does little, Roly turned out to be the complete opposite and with his record of 14-0, considered himself almost an apostle of boxing. Fucking dwarf, man. I'm telling you, man. I can't even mess with your fucking head. I can't even mess with your fucking head. It's so fucking big. It's like this fucking big. And your fucking little T-Rex arms, man. My dick's longer than your fucking arms. In fact, he didn't even see Tank as a human. Witness right fucking there. I got messages. I got all sorts of shit. You ain't fucking show up. Both times. Two fucking times because you knew you were going to get your ass beat. Simple as that. I'm here now. December 5th. I'm here. Yeah, December 5th, you're getting knocked I'm the here. fuck out. That's cool. This clown in a fur coat not only insulted the champion, but also talked about how Javante was afraid to spar with him. That Make sure to buy a pay-per-view and you guys going to see Tank's going to get knocked down one round. Just like that. Not, nothing else need to be said. And also gave a clear prediction for the outcome of the fight. Head, it's kind of going to be kind of hard to fucking miss. I mean, he gets hit by every single opponent. I mean, little Santa Cruz is beating the fuck out of him until I mean, it looks a little so the same punch three times in a row. Fucking what? First what? Like six, seven round Barrios is beating the fuck out of him too. He gets fucking punched by everybody. From the very first seconds, it became noticeable that Romero does not feel as confident in the ring as at press conferences. His movements left much to be desired and all attacks were reduced to straight punches. In addition, Rowley was clearly afraid of Javante's striking power and immediately retreated every time Tank started moving forward. The second round was the best in terms of Romero's performance, but only because Davis did absolutely nothing and just studied the behavior of his opponent. Of course, this kind of work is not taken into account on the judges' scorecards, but its fruits became visible already from the third round. Javante read Rolando as if he already fought him many times and easily dodged all attacks, but did not rush to attack himself. Light body punches, short left straights, rare right hand shots, that's all Tank offered. 
It all looked like the champion was preparing some kind of surprise for the contender, but it was not clear what exactly. At the beginning of the sixth round, Javante increased his aggression and delivered several solid shots, which forced Romero to take action. At one point, he managed to push Tank to the ropes and immediately rushed to attack, thinking the champion was vulnerable, but it was a mistake. Javante Davis swiftly shifted to the right and threw an invisible punch to the opponent from the left. As soon as this bomb crashed into Rowley's chin, he rolled onto the canvas and immediately lost his zero in the defeat column. He was strong, for sure, but um, it was a couple shots that, that uh, I was getting warmed up and he, and he caught me. I just sat it right there, boom. He ran right into it. And he the one ran into something talking about me. Ryan Garcia Undoubtedly, Rowley is a notorious talker and got what he deserved for his words, but there was one guy who deserved punishment even more than Romero. Of course, we're talking about the king of the left hook, Ryan Garcia. Flash has always been one of those guys who likes to chat and attract viewers' attention, but for the promotion of the fight with Javante, he crossed all possible lines. For the first time, Ryan started rocking the boat five years ago when they both performed in the super featherweight division and were just gaining experience. Let's go, Tate! Let's go! Bang, there he go, he's out! That's all I gotta tell you. But I'll be coming for you. Two rounds. By a twist of fate, the guys almost simultaneously came to the conclusion that they could no longer torture themselves and make weight so they decided to move to 135 pounds. In the lightweight division, their paths diverged. Davis went to beat champions or just insanely skilled guys, while Ryan was beating decent boxers or veterans, but at the same time, he earned no less than Tank. On top of that, he kept on calling him out on a regular basis. He's gonna be that, that opponent, of course, I wanna fight him. I wanna fight Tank first, of course. It continued for several years until rumors began to circulate in the second half of 2022 that both sides were highly interested in arranging this fight. Initially, there were no confirmations and the very idea of seeing Ryan and Javante in the same ring seemed only a dream, but then came the official announcement. Garcia Davis, April 23, Las Vegas. Before starting the camp for Ryan, Javante had another defense of the WBA title against the super featherweight division champion Hector Garcia in early January. The Dominican did not cause Tank any particular problems, but there were plenty of troubles in Davis's personal life. Let's go, man. Uh, you definitely seen vulnerability. I got dropped. Uh, but I did show I'm a champion and I want to get that on, like I said. Uh, you know, this is what I've always wanted to do, and I'm a man of my word, and I said, you know, if you don't pick this fight, then you're just not picking legacy, because the money's there. At the end of last year, the champion was accused of domestic violence, and after that, he ended up in court on a case about an accident he had been involved in several years ago. At that time, due to Javante's fault, four people were injured, and he could well face several years of imprisonment. Legal proceedings were scheduled for May, so the Baltimore native focused entirely on preparing for what might be the last fight of his career. I'm just happy that we're here. I made it happen, but now, now I'm, I'm focused on winning. I don't care about just making it a big fight. Meanwhile, Ryan continued to talk and threatened the champion with all kinds of reprisals. Especially often, Flash talked about winning in two rounds. I know you're mad, but it's okay. Uh, maybe all I need is a left hook. Maybe that's all it's gonna take. Damn. Garcia said a lot to Tank, threatened him, promised to put him to sleep, but what did he show when his teams and promoters were no longer around? You just have to wait and see when I'm in there while I'm so special. He can't see it, but he'll see it once he's in there. It's, you're laughing, but it's, I'm dead serious. It's gonna happen and it's gonna be over, quick. The first minutes of the battle turned out to be calm, but at the same time so tense that the air around the ring became heavier. Ryan was the first to break the silence, and in the second round he threw a quick combination to which the champion did not respond. From this moment, Flash's eyes blazed with a blue flame, and he stubbornly pursued his opponent, trying to pick a moment for attack, but still made a mistake. 
Garcia threw his signature hook, but Davis dodged and dropped the opponent with a counter left. Remind me, when did Ryan want to finish Javante? However, the guy deserves credit. Despite an obviously hard shot, he quickly came back to his senses and drew conclusions. For the next few minutes, Garcia worked very restrained, preferring jab to left hook and constantly kept his right hand at the jaw. The champion took advantage of being able to do whatever he wanted and easily outstruck his opponent by a couple of hits, thereby taking the rounds. At the beginning of the sixth round, Garcia caught Javante with a decent right hand shot and decided to develop his success. Passivity was replaced by aggression and the jab turned into a wild left hook. For several minutes, the guys fought evenly. No, Ryan gained the advantage and started to feel confident. What a shock it was when it became clear that all this was just a trick. Waiting for Garcia to go all out again, Javante skillfully ducked down and with one short and almost unseeable left punch, torn apart the prospect's liver. How brutal was that shot? My game, so when he was looking at me, I was I was looking at him like trying to tell him like get up. And then he just he just shook his head no. And that's it. Did you like the video? Then be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Do you think Javante can knock out Frank Martin or will the ghost shock the world? Leave your opinion in the comments below.